Chag Sameach, Chag Sameach, I wish you a, a joyous Passover and hope that wherever you are and with whom you're spending this holiday, that you'll find a way to make this a joyful occasion in spite of the very unusual and difficult circumstances that we, we find ourselves in. Uh, one of the most significant parts of the Seder ceremony, which always occurs after dinner, uh, is the opening of the door for Elijah which has a, a long and colorful history. And I, I think especially for kids, uh, opening that door for Elijah is kind of a dramatic moment, never knowing if somebody might actually come through the door, uh, which of course is what we, we kind of hope for because Elijah, if you will, is the symbol of the coming messianic age, the time when uh, war and violence will have come to an end and where pestilence and plague and famine will also be no more. So I, I can't think of a better reason to open the door for Elijah than exactly that, in the hope that uh, what we're going through now, this ordeal, will soon be over. And for that reason, I, I would like to make a small suggestion that you slightly rearrange the order of your Passover Seder. And instead of uh, opening the door for Elijah after the Seder ceremony has mostly been done, and after the matzo balls and the gefilte fish and the entire meal has been eaten, uh, instead of opening the door then, open it at the very beginning, at about the time when you light the candles, as if to express uh, hope for the future, and also to just take a look outside and concentrate for a few moments on the fact that, although it's probably pretty empty and quiet out there, still we're incredibly grateful to be in, in this land of freedom uh, unlike so many generations of Jews in times gone by. So in that spirit, I, I once again wish you a uh, happy Passover, Chag Sameach, and uh, hope you enjoy this uh, small introduction to the holiday. So as a symbol of, of hope, um, we are going to continue with Eliyahu Hanavi, just as Rabbi Sternfield suggested. Um, let us begin our Seders, our Passover festival this year with this hopefulness, with our spirits raised high, um, and, and with our faith um, intact. So, Elijah, we call on you. And here's, here's our Kos Eliyahu. Well, we have the Kos Chalyayin, which represents um, all four of our cups. We'll do a little Kiddush after this. And um, and we'll use we'll use this as our koseliyahu, and this is our kiddush cup for the festival. Okay, Elijah, are you listening? We've opened our door, and we join together. We welcome you. Come and enter and be with us. Eliyahu hanavi, Eliyahu hatishvi. Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu ha-giladi. Bimhera ve'omenu, Yavu ezrei 
Hallo, im Moschi, ach wenn da wird, im Moschi, ach wenn da wird, Eliahu, Hanavi, Eliahu, Hatisch A new tune for Eliyahu. Eli, Eliyahu, Eli, Eliyahu, Eli, Eliyahu, Hanavi, Eli, Eliyahu, Eli, Eliyahu, Eli. This may strike you as a rather unusual way to uh, take a video uh, since I'm sitting and Cantor Bard is standing, there she is, <laughs> but uh, as you must know, uh, we're not exactly the same height. So uh, for this occasion, it works pretty well. You and noticed. Plus, I don't mind sitting, so it's, it's all right. Um, we're not going He's to conduct here. the entire Seder this evening. That's, f that's for you to do. But we wanted to introduce it with a, a few more of the elements. Uh, the next one of which is really the order of the entire Seder, which has been pretty much the same order for well over 2,000, perhaps even as much as 3,000 years. Uh, it contains all the steps from beginning to end, and uh, no matter where you are living, no matter what Jewish community you're a part of, no matter what your native language may be, uh, virtually every Passover Seder uh, contains these same elements. It starts with Kadesh or Chatz. Okay. Oh, actually, before she begins, Ur Chatz means washing the hands. Uh, which is not something that all Reformed Jews do, but we're going to do it often during this Seder. Uh, in <laughs> fact, we're going to do it re re we're repetitiously. Wash our hands yeah, the more the more times you wash your hands, the the, the better it is for and this we're Seder. We're going to wash it while we're singing "Happy Birthday to You" two times through. I I, I learned that from Micah Clark, actually. Okay, right. so here we go. All right. Kadesh Okay. Kadeh Yishur Chatz, Kar Pas Yachatz, Magid Rachatzar, Motzi Matzar, Maror Korech, Shulechan Orech, Safu. Matzah, you bless and eat, wash bitter herbs, haroset sweet. At last the meal takes place, but before you say the grace, find the afikomen, bring the supper to its end, then recite the psalms of praise, Final thanks to God we raise. So um, we, as we prepare to offer our blessing for the first cup, um, I'm going to read from this wonderful Agadah that Rabbi Sternfield just mentioned to you, um, the American Jewish World Service Agada, and it's understood as a global justice um, Agada. Oops, I need my glasses. Tonight, we'll gather round the Seder table to recount the ancient Israelites' miraculous transformation from slavery to freedom. Our story began with an awakening. As our tradition teaches, Moses saw the burning bush and recognized that he was called to liberate his people from Egypt, our people from Egypt. So our journey too begins now with an awakening. And may this first cup of wine rouse each of us 
to the injustice that persists in our world today, may we recognize our own capacity to make a difference and may we commit ourselves to building a better world. Amen. Join in the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei peri hagafen. Amen. L'chayam l'simcha l'pesach l'shalom. I'll take a sip. It's Manashevitz. Mmm. Good. Rabbi? No, thank you. I'll imbibe later because I'm holding the camera. <laughs> okay. L'chaim. And, and um, next, we will give a little, a little taste of the mitzvah, our commandment to dip the karpas in salt water. And I will read from the Haggadah. As we prepare to dip the karpas, the, the parsley, which of course is um, a wonderful sign of spring, um, as we dip the karpas into the salt water, we see the tears of all who suffer injustice. We see the tears mingling with our high hopes for life, for rebirth, for good health, and for new possibilities for justice and peace in our world. I'm going to take and dip. This is from our, our garden on our balcony. So there you go. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei peri ha'adamah. Amen. We praise you, O God, creator of all creation, who brings forth the, the vegetable, the fruit, the greens from the earth. Amen. I'll take a little bite on behalf of everyone. Mm, very good. And we want to share our Seder tradition, of course. I want to share with you the Yachatz, which is the breaking of the middle matzah. So here we have three matzot. I'm going to take this and I want to offer you the reading. On this Pesach at our Seder, we break the matzah into two pieces, reflecting the deep brokenness in our world, in our country, in our communities, and our commitment strong commitment to work to repair, tikkun olam, to make our world a better place. Yachatz. And then Rabbi Sternfield is going to hide one piece of our matzah for the afikomen. As Canterbar just uh, broke the middle matzah, uh, that section is called Yachatz. Uh, and here's a small piece of Jewish trivia before I, I say what's really on my mind. Everybody knows that matzah is perforated, uh, corrugated, uh, you might say. Have you ever wondered why? Well, there actually is a reason. Uh, it's a mechanical reason. When matzah was first produced in factories in the United States, 
uh, as you know, the dough has to be prepared and baked in a very precise period of time. Uh, but this was after the invention of conveyor belts. And so in order to get the dough through the conveyor belt in the proper way, uh, they added these little spikes to the conveyor belt. And as a result, all matzah is perforated, except for shmura matzah, which is round and tastes pretty much like cardboard, uh, which is used in the Orthodox community. But this is the standard variety, Banashevitz, Yehuda, matzah, and for what it's worth. But uh, on a little more serious note, actually much more serious, uh, yachatz uh, indicates sharing. And what a fabulous symbol for this particular Passover. Sharing of hopes, uh, sharing of our history, but also an awareness, you know, a real awareness, that uh, we are all in this together. Actually, more than our community, more than our state, more than our country, the, the entire world is in this together. And it's been a very, very long time, perhaps never, that people around the world have come to see themselves as part of one human family. And if there is any blessing to be had from this terrible pandemic, perhaps it is with the understanding that we are not so isolated as we sometimes pretend that really we are part of one world and that the problems that affect one part of the world ultimately also have an effect elsewhere, uh, everywhere in the world. And so yachatz, yes, a symbol of sharing uh, Passover, a, a symbol of sharing uh, the world in which we live. So that's it for our little uh, Pesach warm-up, uh, as you are about to observe your own seders. Uh, every seder I know of always begins with the word, ends rather, with the words, Lashana Haba'a Birushalayim, next year in Jerusalem, and Yerushalayim basically means a city of peace. So let's say it a little differently this way, this this year rather. Lashana Haba Birushalayim, next year may we all be together in a world of restored health. Good job. Lishana Haba'a, Lishana Haba'a, Lishana Haba'a, Birushalayim, Lishana Haba'a, Lishana Haba'a, Lishana Haba'a, Birushalayim. So, um, we, as we prepare to offer.